Hi everyone. Yes, I'm back. It's Anne. Yes, I've had a haircut, but that's not what I want to talk about today. Um, I'm doing this as a voiceover because every time I tried to do it while trying to put the makeup on, I ended up, yeah, not being able to deal. This video, which at the beginning has a dedication to my baby sister, is about losing and dealing with a sibling when there's nothing you can do because even though you've reached out to them, they didn't reach back. My sister and I dealt with some really difficult situations in our family from the time we were very small. And for the most part, the family kind of just swept everything under the rug and ignored everything and didn't listen when we spoke. And we had to deal with the repercussions from those difficult situations as best we could without any real support. Well, it got down to a point where we finally were believed by the time we were adults because one of the other cousins jumped up and said, oh yes he did because he did it to me too. It was one of our uncles. And at the time we were also still dealing with the fact that our mother was an abuser and the rest of the family again basically just said look it's in the past now get over it between the incidents and the continued abuse through young adulthood we managed to survive. But where I started going to therapy, my sister resisted. I tried several times to convince her that she really needed to, to talk to somebody. And Eventually, she did try to talk to somebody briefly, but my sister could not be talked out of being the one to attempt to continue to take care of our mother once my father had passed away. So she was left and left herself vulnerable by staying with the abuser who even though she wasn't physically strong enough to cause physical injury any longer she was still able to cause a great deal of emotional injury my sister and her husband split up partially due to some of that and then she basically reached a point where she couldn't deal any longer. The depression won. I didn't have her nearly long enough. Not nearly. She's supposed to still be here. And she's not. She left just before her birthday 
in 2002. It took me a long time to stop being angry with her for giving up because that's what I believed at the time that she had given up that she could have you know held on she could have said something more to me it's like I lived in another state she was eight hours away I wasn't close enough and she didn't trust anyone else enough to reach out. Her birthday is January 21st. I'm filming this on January 21st. Whether or not it will actually make it on to YouTube is debatable. It really is. But this was one of the things we shared. Not the YouTube, but liking to play with makeup. She always went for pale colors. She was determined to stay with pale colors because she said they didn't draw as much attention to her. I know where that came from. She didn't want the attention. At least not at the time we started playing with makeup. This is probably one of the hardest films that I have done. Yes, I'm sniffling through the whole thing. We all know that I have the sniffles most of the time anyway. However, in this case, it was trying to keep from crying while I tried to put the makeup on for the fourth time. No, I'm not looking for outpourings of massive sympathy. I'm not looking for people to come rushing in and pat me on the back and tell me how pitiful it is. But I want people to understand that depression is a serious illness. It can be caused by any number of things. It can be caused by nothing more than your body not being balanced with the brain chemicals that you're supposed to have. It can be triggered it can just be. If you know someone who has an issue with depression, reach out. They don't always reach out first. And understand that sometimes, no matter how often or how much you reach out, they don't always manage to win the battle. I have my own issues that come from that time period. I have my own issues that come from situations that happened with my first and second husbands. I'm dealing with them. I'm in therapy. 
I'm on good meds. My entire family is aware of the situation and they keep an eye out for changes. Yes, I have sometimes said, screw the meds and stop taking them. I have occasionally enjoyed the, the hospitality of psychiatric inpatient at hospital because of a crisis. But I'm still fighting. I don't always do a good job of it. When it comes to this time of year, missing my sister, I don't always get a lot of things done that I would prefer to be doing. I'm having problem keeping up with my schoolwork a little bit this couple of weeks. And yeah, I haven't been filming that much. There are reasons. I didn't just get tired of it and walk away. Keep an eye on your friends and family. If you think they've got an issue that they need to talk about, or if you think they are in danger of injuring themselves, talk to them. Reach out to them. If necessary, reach out to a crisis center. Don't give up. Keep trying. But also realize that if everything that you do is not enough, there are people who can help you deal with what happens. I did not deal that well. Went to a psychiatrist. He gave me a raft of pills. Finally found a counselor. Kept the psychiatrist, needed some pills. Medication for depression is nothing to be ashamed of. Needing a counselor to talk to is nothing to be ashamed of. It simply is. It's no different than being diabetic or having a heart condition or any other type of illness. You take your meds, you follow your routines, you keep an eye on yourself, you let other people in your family and, and, and surroundings know that there could be issues. Don't try and hide. I had some real trouble after my sister passed. I ended up with mom and after having her in my home for about six months my husband looked at me and said she needs to be somewhere else because you're not dealing this is killing you so she was placed in a happy home where they could keep an eye on her and where she could tell her tales of woe and such that 
she kept trying to tell my sister and I that were that was all our fault. My husband recognized in me the symptoms that were showing I needed help and needed to be away from the toxic situation. I tried. I did. I tried to do what the family expected. I got lucky. I didn't let continued abuse take me beyond what I could deal with because I had help. My baby sister meant the world to me. She really did. We were close enough in age and size that for a long time people thought we were twins. And then my short little self stopped growing and she kept going. Yes. It hurts still. I miss her every day. It's gotten a little easier to deal with. A little. And I will continue to reach out to people When I know they need help, I will continue to take care of myself because I know I need help. This isn't something I can fight on my own. And I'm starting to repeat myself. So I'm just going to put some music on for the rest of this. At the very end of the video, there's the end piece that I've been using since the first of the year that shows a crisis hotline in case you know somebody who's in trouble or if you're in trouble. And it shows pretty colored beads. The necklace I'm wearing has some of the orange beads. The shirt I'm wearing is because her birthstone is garnet. And she loved it. The colors on my eyes are just what I felt like today. Listen to yourself. Listen to your friends and family when they reach out to try to help. Also remember that when they try overdo it to tell them to push back a little. Sometimes they want to help a little too hard. Take care of yourselves take care of each other. Don't be ashamed to reach out. It's not a shameful thing no matter how many times somebody's great grandma says different. 
it's not something to keep hidden in the family. It really isn't.